I hope so on some level, but um, we may need to make some adjustments if we want to, in a, a mindful way, uh, try to match up the system to what we need um, as a science. Um, and I, I didn't know that Jerry was going to make modest proposals as well, but, but, but I, I think that part of that conversation, and one of the reasons I, I thought I'd, I'd be happy to make a few statements here, was just that I think we do need to talk about, as a field, um, ways in which this system does or doesn't work for having the editors uh, as a part of the system that we need. And, and my modest proposal, well, and, and I can easily imagine some people disagreeing with various aspects of it, but is that we really do need to seek ways that we can reduce, reduce the workload so it can be manageable to be an editor alongside your active research program. It's never, we only have so much time. And so it's always going to take time away from the other things that many of us really want to be doing. Um, but we need to make it manageable. And I'm not sure that the system we have now from the editor's point of view is really all that manageable. Um, that may mean that, that we need to shorten terms and, and that we, instead of saying, take six years out of your life all right now, you know, maybe people will be more willing to say, I, I can take a year or two, but I'm not going to take all of this current student's time in my, my lab um, and edit through that entire time. Maybe we can cycle in and out with shorter terms and feel less like, well, I did my time. Um, if it was a shorter term. Maybe we can find ways to reduce the number of papers. I understand that that creates its own issues, where it, it may mean expanding the number of editors at any one time. And I know that that's, you know, people fret over that already. Um, but if we don't make it manageable, if we're only expanding the number ed of editors enough so that they feel like once they've done it once, maybe as an associate editor for three years and never do it again, then we may be uh, short-circuiting what our long-term goals are as a system. Um, and what I would hope that, that some of these efforts might do, and it would have to do for it to be effective, is that it would increase the number of times that a person cycles into that system. Um, if it didn't, then of course none of this would help at all. Um, but um, if it meant that every, every you know, 10 years a person was editing for four of them, but they felt like they could do it and it'd be manageable, then over a person's career, they may in fact have added a lot more from that editorial point of view than they did doing their one six-year stint at JPSP and feeling like that was enough for a lifetime. Now certainly, um, other factors absolutely contribute to the whole system, and I don't want to minimize those, but, that, but I didn't want to focus my comments, um, my brief comments tonight on, on, uh, on those. But certainly there are other factors, including from the reviewer standpoint, um, and how that, that works. I think that actually as an editor, one could imagine that a lot of our editing could be more efficient if we have certain kinds of reviews to use. Um, when, uh, when we have a review that just lists a bunch of problems but doesn't tell us, well, what are the implications of those problems? Is this a problem that would really, um, that, that can be easily fixed or, or is it a problem that, that is uh, a fatal flaw? then it's up to the editor to tell the authors what those things are and to say, well, they said that you know, th this reviewer had this issue, and I think this is a, a major issue that you're going to have to deal with in these ways. But we have to write that as editors if it's not in the reviews. Um, if the reviews have more of that there already, um, then you can refute, refer to a review and say, as they noted, here are these uh, issues, and, and they also noted the implications. So I think the quality of the reviews that we get actually could make a difference in how manageable the editing task is. Um, and I think it may very well require some greater discussion. I hope that this might in some small way help to foster that discussion. I don't know if training is quite, quite the right word, but, but discussion surrounding the role of editors and how that differs from the role of reviewers. Um, for me, actually, I don't have a big problem as an editor with having, I, I know there's some angst out there about, about reviewers being too negative and this, that, and the other, and uh, may, maybe I'm just uh, naturally have some of that adversarial uh, perspective in it, but, but I, I'm okay as an editor with reviewers being negative. It, I, I feel like in some ways that is a part of their role is to find flaws if they're there, and again, to to prioritize what those flaws are and what the implications are. 
Um, it's the job of the author to make the case for the contribution. I don't think the, the reviewers need to spend time balancing the review by saying, well, but they were, there were these contributions. That was the job of the author, and that's my job when I author papers to note what the contributions are. But then as an editor, I have to make a decision. I have to, I have to decide, is this something that can be published as it is? Is it not salvageable and needs to be rejected? Um, you know, is it publishable if this manageable revision can be done? Those are the kinds of decisions I have to make um, as an editor. And I have to be able to explain that in a way that the authors understand it, right? If it's just, oh, sorry, you know, um, that's not very helpful as, as an author. And the next time they submit it, it's going to look the same. Now, we might provide that feedback and it still looks the same, right? It won't solve everything. But I feel like part of the job as an editor is, in fact, to explain the rationale for what the decision is. And in cases where you can, to help improve it, even if it doesn't come back to this journal, so that the next time they know what the issues are and they can make changes if they want to make those changes. Um, I, I think it rarely, although I can understand cases where this would be a part of the role as well, but I think it's rarely um, our job as editors to send it out for re-reviews. I, I can't think of more than a, a, a handful, and not even a handful of papers that I've ever sent out for re-review. Um, I just don't see the need. Um, once you have reviews from experts and they've raised the issues, make a decision. That's just the way I look at it. Um, but um, uh, now what are the possible benefits of trying to structure things in a way that make the editing job manageable alongside of everything else we do? I hope that it would result in um, long-term repeated service by quality editors. And thankfully, we already do have a great deal of effort on, on the part of, of quality editors, and, and we need that. But I, I think that we could do better by making it something more manageable while people are doing it. Um, I think that it could result in a greater satisfaction with the process on the part of authors. I think that if a person is handling 20 or 25 papers a year, and I don't know if that's the right number at any, in, in any way, but I think that if that's happening, it's going to tend to be a quicker turnaround than when you're trying to handle 50, 60, 80, 100 papers um, because you have less on your desk at any one time. You're going to find more opportunities to work on exactly that in between everything else that you do. Um, and uh, aside from that, however, I'm not sure that satisfaction with the process is, is even mostly driven on the part of authors by the amount of time it took for the decision. I think a lot more of that um, is um, because they understand the process and get something useful from it. Um, it, it. It doesn't end up being, well, I just got rejected because I didn't satisfy these two reviewers or whatever where the, the decision said you didn't satisfy the reviewer so it's rejected. I think that dissatisfaction is not with how long it took. It's with what the process was and whether I got anything useful out of it as an author. Um, and I hope that maybe um, at, from that author perspective then, if, they're, if they feel like it's a reasonable process and something that they can contribute to, that maybe in the end you'd get greater participation by authors in that editorial system when they're asked. Um, and maybe that in part is because people see each other editing um, and people who haven't edited yet see the task that it can be and they get turned off by it. Um, and, and hopefully if you make it more manageable, less people will be turned off at the beginning. Um, but those are just a few things that I wanted to mention, and uh, we can discuss from there. So thanks a lot. <laughs>